In our last video, we filled out this table to try to have some kind of understanding of what it means to have a percentage of increase or a percentage of decrease. And we got to the point where we realized we were doing this division. I want to expand upon that a bit and relate this to the formula that you're going to see in your book. So first off, let's start with what we already know from uh, previous lessons. And what we learned in the past was that our part is always equal to some percent of my whole. Okay, and rearranging this, if you divide both sides by the whole amount, another way to think of this is that whatever percent you get, that is equal to your part divided by your whole which you've been working with this idea for a long time, ever since you started school. If you had a quiz and it was five questions and you got three of them right, your part is three, your whole is five, three out of five would be the same thing as six out of every 10 or 60 out of every 100. You know, a three out of five would be, of course, a 60%. Now, how does this idea relate to our percentage of increase or percentage of decrease? Well, the first thing is rather than just having the word percent here, because I want to focus on this as a percentage of change or percentage of increase or percentage of decrease, I'm going to write that in here. So my percent now is really going to be some percentage of change. Now, the next piece of this is with the whole amount, basically every single time you have a starting value and you have an ending value. With your whole, you want to think of your whole as always your starting value or your original. So this is your original, you know, or what you had at the start. So you start with some amount and then it changes by a certain percent and you multiply that by the, by the percentage of change. Uh, and then your part, is basically going to be what you've ended up with or what, what is your amount of change here. So if this is a percentage of change times your original, your part is really going to be some amount of change. So for example, just as an easy one, if I had a percentage of change of 50%, I would put that in as a decimal, okay? And let's say that my original number, you know, I started with 20. So I have 20 units of something. My percentage of change is going to be 50%. So my amount of change, 50% of 20 would be 10. So my amount of change would just be 10 in that case. So what I would end up with, depending on if this is a percentage of change that's an increase or a decrease, is if it was an increase, I started with 20. And now I have 30, if it's a percentage of increase. If it is a decrease, I'm starting with 30. I lost half of what I had. I took 50% of it, so now I'm ending with 10. So this, in this case, I went down 10. And make sure you realize that you know, there's an amount that I'm going up in terms of the actual quantity that I'm dealing with. And then there's the amount that I'm going up as a percent. So gaining 10 for every 20 is the same thing as gaining 50%. Losing 10 for every 20 would be the same thing as losing 50%. Now, just like I did over here, when I rearranged this equation, I said my percent is equal to some part of my whole. Let's just do the same thing. And let's divide both sides by what I had at the beginning. So the rewritten form of this is that my percent of change And just to be clear here, you know, we use the decimal form of a percent here. This was the decimal form. This percentage of change is going to be the decimal form. My percentage of change is always equal to my amount of change 
which is how much did I go up or how much did I go down if it's a percentage of decrease divided by my original. And this is just a fantastic little formula to kind of keep in mind as you work through these math problems. This will be extremely helpful for you to just almost kind of memorize this. Your percentage of change is always going to be your amount of change divided by your original. And if you look in the textbook, uh, they're going to write this amount of change in kind of a fancy way. But just think of it as, you know, how much did you go up or how much did you go down? Uh, if it's a percentage of increase, your book says to take your new amount and subtract the original amount. So with the example I came up with a little bit ago here, my new amount was 30, my original amount was 20, and if I subtract those two things, 30 minus 20 it would be 10. You know, I'm going up 10, that's my amount of change. If it's a percentage of decrease, so here, let's be clear. Let's say that the, that's for when it's an increase. Uh, now, if it's a decrease, you want to think of this as your original amount. This is what your textbook's doing. Your original amount minus your new amount. So when it went down, uh, my original amount was 20, my new amount was 10. If I take 20 minus 10, I get 10. I realize this was going down 10. So that's how you would work that out for a percentage of decrease. Quite honestly, the easier way I think is just to always think of it as amount of change, how much did I go up or how much did I go down? Now, let's relate this idea to what we did in the last video. So if my percentage of change is always my amount of change divided by my original, that is exactly what I did in this table. This is my amount of change, 505, divided by what I originally had, 324. This is my amount of change, 20, divided by what I had at the start, or, se or 70. Once again, you know, if you include the negative in there, you'll get a negative answer. Just realize that means a percentage of decrease. You could leave it out and just use the word decrease. Um, my amount of change was two divided by what I originally had, which was 25. That was an 8% decrease. So hopefully that helps a little more with uh, making sense of this percentage of increase, percentage of decrease content.